Thanks for tuning in everyone. Today's episode is all about MIG welding stainless steel and the things that you need to consider when you try to pick up this process. If you find this video helpful or interesting, please follow, like, subscribe, do all the things that help us out so we can keep creating this content. I've been welding for about 15 years now and MIG is one of the first things that I picked up and I'm sure a lot of other people have picked up too. I think most people probably have a similar experience where they pick up a welding machine, they usually start off with a smaller version, 110, and then you start with the self shoot of flux, you eventually upgrade, you get some gas, whether it's be C100 or mixed gas 7525, and you pick up some 70S6 wire. Now when something comes along the line your plate as far as stainless, some people think, hey, I gotta pick up a new process like TIG welding in order to weld this. That's not true. There are a few things that you need to consider when it comes to picking up a gun and running some stainless wire through it. Before we even bother going to get the machine set up and everything, we've gotta get a hold of some stainless steel in the first place. This stuff is a lot more expensive than carbon steel. It's got a lot more alloys like chrome and nickel in order to make it corrosion resistant and a little bit tougher. I recommend if you're going to go practice and buy some, go to your local metal supply and get some drop pieces that they're selling for a little cheaper so that you can get some good practice in. You better have a reason to work with it because it costs a lot of money and you don't want to be storing it next to your carbon steel stuff because if this rubs against carbon then it can have scratches in it. Now it's cross contaminated or maybe you have a cutting wheel that you used on carbon steel and now you're cutting on your stainless with it. You've cross contaminated it and now it could rust in the future. It may not see it right now, but years down the road, it's now rusting when it shouldn't be. So you have to store this in a separate area, which poses another issue. And the fact that stainless steel to be considered stainless is at least 11% chrome, that could make you have to purge or use a backing gas on the back side of the material when it comes to pipe or tubing. Now this is all crazy things to consider when you're going to pick up some stainless steel to work with. Today we're going to tone it back to MIG welding only. We're going to cut some coupons out of some 304 stainless steel 14 gauge with some Cubitron 3s by 3M. These are some good cutoff wheels and they can handle the toughness of this stainless steel so that we can get as many coupons out of here with the life of just one cutoff disc. So once we have enough of these, we can take a look at the machine to see what machine options we need and gas. This is outside my shop. My shop's pretty small, so I keep all my bottles and stuff outside and plummet through the building. It's a lot easier than having these inside, but 7525 gas is what you normally would find, or at least people are normally starting out with as far as a mixed gas for MIG welding. That or C100, so 100% CO2. Now for MIG welding stainless steel, in my experience, this is the only reason why you'd need to get this stuff, is this Trimix helium, argon, and carbon dioxide gas runs a lot more helium inside the bottle so that the puddle is a lot hotter because stainless steel just needs a lot more heat in order to really flow right. This tri-mix gas is the stuff to use. Can you use 7525 mixed gas? I would say in a pinch as long as you have the right wire and you just need to get something done you could probably get by with it but it doesn't run as good as if you're running this tri-mix gas. We've got a great video from well.com. Bob Moffat did one right over here. To put it in perspective again, this is a small bottle. These are big bottles. These this one bottle costs about 100 bucks to fill up, and this one right here costs about $160 to fill up. So pros and cons to it, um, I can weld stainless steel with TIG with 100% argon. So do I need to step up to MIG welding stainless steel? Is it that much pr more production that I need out of it, that cleanliness and weld aesthetics isn't necessary? Then maybe it is something to break one off to get the tri-mix gas so that we can weld a little bit more, a little bit faster. Now let's talk about our money maker, the machine that you need. Now Austin, you've said the equipment that you've needed for this type of stuff is always more expensive. So what about the MIG machine? You can run any old MIG machine when it comes to welding stainless steel. It still has to have that constant voltage and all that good stuff. However, stainless steel, like I said, needs that extra bit of heat, the extra beans, if you will. So you're going to need the voltage in order to run those beans. In this case, we've got to run off 220. We can't run off 110 or we won't get the volts that we need in, in order to weld this 14 gauge steel really well. Another thing I do like about this Hurricane 220 MTS-C, it has everything that you need in one. So we've got MIG welding with 7525, or if you're using 100% CO2, or if you're welding 100% argon on aluminum, or if you're using Trimix on stainless steel or no gas at all. It has all those functions, including ACDC TIG and stick. Again, this is getting way more in depth than whatever today's lesson is. I'm just kind of bragging. We're gonna keep it on the stainless steel function for today. Again, we're gonna need the voltage in order to run it. We're gonna be running some 030 size 308 filler metal. This is gonna be more expensive 100%. I went to the, the weld supply store and I said, let me get one of them 11 
pound spools. They said right away, sir, that'll be $160. My stomach about fell out of my butt. I went with the two pound spool. This one was about $35. We're gonna keep it at 21 volts, 400 inches per minute because we're running the smaller size wire. We're gonna go and play with this machine so that you can see what happens when you change some of these variables from what we've got here and what I think it sets right so that you can tell the difference. Now we know what we need for our MIG welding of stainless steel. We've got our machine set. We've got the right wire in for the material that we're using. We're running the right kind of gas. We're getting suited up now. Now I never said that MIG welding stainless steel was gonna be as glamorous as TIG welding stainless steels. There's a lot of pros and cons to both. One thing's for sure is you're not gonna get those aesthetically pleasing welds that you used to get all those pretty colors when TIG welding. These typically come out kind of gray. And also when welding stainless steel, you're burning off what's called hexavalent chromium. And it's something to be concerned of because long-term exposure to this can cause some serious health concerns. A respirator, good ventilation, a fan on, all these things could really help as far as welding it. But let's dive in now that we're suited up and everything's set up and kind of hear some of the traditional sounds to this stainless steel MIG welding. That O3 O wire comes out of there quick. Stainless MIG is notorious for its BBs, especially in this short circuit or globular transfer. We're just spraying some ceramic coat on the table so I don't get a bunch of nasty BBs on it. Now just comparing this to regular MIG, it's a lot crunchier sounding. It throws off a lot of BBs and it tends to want to weld cold, so we weld at a much higher voltage. Now this 14 gauge, normally I'd want to weld, I don't know, 19, 20, or 20. This seems to be somewhere in the 21, 22 volt for 14 gauge. Seems to be working great. I try to carry a push angle. I might do a little bit of motion, circles, whips mostly maintaining those work and travel angles to lay down the flattest weld that I can. Pushing that weld is going to help lay a flatter weld, but that crunchy sound, that's just the, the stainless short circuit, man. That's just what it sounds like. Now taking a closer look at the weld itself, you know, we've got a nice size bead. We had a nice push angle and the size of the weld is probably a little bit bigger than I'd like. Oh, and there's still BBs on the plate. I didn't use any anti-spatter on the actual material itself. I, I recommend if you're welding, MIG welding stainless steel that you use anti-spatter religiously on everything that you're doing because again it throws a lot of spatter off. And you're not going to see those really pretty golds and blues and purples when it comes to this weld. This isn't about aesthetics, this is about production. Afterwards you're going to have a considerable amount of post weld cleaning. You're still going to want to run something over it as far as a wire wheel, a passive asymp system, maybe the 3M cleaning strip wheel that's kind of like a wire wheel. It'll get it all cleaned up and you still have those same stainless properties as if you were to TIG weld it. It's just not as pretty, but pretty isn't always what you need. We've got plenty of penetration. You can see that on the back side, but let's do some variables and see what we can show you as far as how what, what's going to change if we maybe change our contact work distance or travel speed or any of those things. So we've got a, a pipe to sheet metal kind of situation going on here. It might be something of a production part that you could say, but we're gonna take the variables that we all know and love about MIG welding and kind of transfer them to the stainless steel. What's it look like when we weld too fast? What's it look like when we pull it? What's it look like when we weld too far away? What's what it look like when we weld too hot, not enough wire feed? We're going to run into that now. All right, the first thing that we're going to do to mess up this weld is we're going to turn our voltage way down and make just a really chilly weld. Somewhere around 17 volts, 18 volts might be good for 14 gauge, but I'm, I'm expecting this to be the worst thing for the stainless steel. Oh, that's just nasty. No fusion, super cold. Nothing wants to lay down. It has a decent sound, but it's not flowing. Now let's turn our voltage back up to 21-ish, and then turn our wire feed down. This is basically gonna give us too high a volt or too low of wire feed. Basically the opposite of what we just saw. Now 
I don't know, I kind of like that. It didn't sound right, but it, it flowed good. All right, we've got our wire feed and voltage back the way we had them. Now we're gonna go for too fast of travel speed. Which if you got the heat up there, you can move pretty quick. Not gonna lie. Now we're gonna hit that with too slow of travel speed. Which again, isn't a bad weld, it's just freaking huge. Now we've got travel speed down. We're gonna to move to contact tip to work distance. So just like any other MIG welding process, we've gotta be a certain distance away. This is what it looks like when we start to get too far. Start close, we'll start getting further out there. Oh, we're definitely way out of our shielding gas now. And you can get in and out, and you can start to hear where that sweet spot is. If we start to get too close, it sounds better, but we can't see. So we start pulling out to where we can see good, but not too far away. We get all that trash. Now just for fun, let's go ahead and switch the gas from Trimix to 7525 and see those results. Definitely can see it's a lot smokier. The puddle doesn't seem as hot. We're getting a lot more, a lot colder buckshot. It almost sounds like Self-shielded plug score wire, it sounds really funny. Oddly enough, we've got a hotter looking weld. Get a closer look at our experiment here. We've got the 7525, that's when we put that on there. So it's not like, aesthetically, it's not a whole lot different than what we've been doing. A little heavier BBs on there, so I would say you could still get by. It does look just a little crispier for whatever reason. This is our contact to work distance. You can see getting far away, we caught some porosity. And getting too close, things started to get a little bit flatter and smoother, but still just uh, just couldn't see towards the end of that. Right here, we've got too slow of travel speed. This is just an oversized weld. It's just not necessary to be that size. And then our quick weld looks the prettiest. We actually started getting some of those colors back into the stainless steel, just not having to stay in one spot so long. So maybe we do up our travel speed up a lot more if we can get the penetration that we need. This one right here, is when we said that our wire feed was too low, so we had our volts too high, and it honestly welded pretty good, so that just is a characteristic of this stainless steel that it just really likes a lot more voltage, because that's what it looks like when you're welding too cold with this stuff. It just does not want to stick, and 18 volts really is pretty good for carbon steel, but it just is no match for this stainless steel. Now, after kind of seeing all that and a bit of practice, I think I could put down a nice, Nice weld right here. So I'm gonna try to get the slickest thing that I can put on this stainless for you guys right now. This isn't a real part. This is just some stuff I had sitting around, but. Ooh, I better go switch it back to that Trimix gas. Yes, sir, break out the old roller and my buddy Jack here. We're gonna see if we can make a slick one. slicker than TIG, but it's on there. <laughs> well guys, I sure hope this video helped y'all into thinking and considering or whether or not stainless steel MIG is for you. If you're not into straight production parts where aesthetics and, and cleanliness isn't always necessary, but speed and production is, stainless steel MIG is that route, but there is a cost to it and there is obviously some cleaning to do afterwards. So take all these things into consideration and if you found this video valuable, I really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel and share it to all your friends and family. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you on the next weld.